Welcome everyone to week six or episode number six of the Pokeballs podcast. My name is Lee and I'm joined by my co-host Scott. How are you doing this week, mate? I'm tired. Tired. Long weekend. Yeah. Me too, mate. Yeah, I'm always tired. That's what happens in adulthood. You're just constantly tired. <laughs> it's been a bank holiday here in the UK for us all. So uh, do you have a have you been up too much over the weekend or? I went hiking up some mountains over the weekend. That's why I'm super tired. Mountains. Got severely sunburnt because it was meant to rain. Like too sunburnt. You look well, my arms look like um, drumsticks. It's like a. Can you see oh. that tan line? Ooh. It was a lot worse. Wow. Than that. Also, but our, but our listeners, calves, it's the the back yeah. of my calves also got burnt, which I've never had before. Oh, when I've been that sunburnt. is nasty. And man. all around my neck as well. Because it was literally like the forecast for up on the mountains. It was meant to be like rain all day. And so yeah. in the morning when we went up, I was in thermals. I had two jumpers on and I had a beanie on. It was freezing when we first started. Once we got to the summit, it was like boiling. And it was like it all day. <laughs> and I'd left my bloody sun cream and hat in the car. And so I was, yeah, I was. Oh, and then we got like, mate, we, got, is... we got lost. So when we went down the mountain, <laughs> my mate was like, my mate does, he's like a DV leader and like he wants to be a mountaineer like a guide and stuff he does he's been there loads he's hiked loads in these same mountains but we went somewhere dif- different because mount snowden was busy because it was bank holiday and so um once we'd done all the peaks he was like oh the quickest way down is directly down and i'm i'm not joking like it was like this steep all the way down like and i was like freaking out. Was like, are you sure this is safe and it's like yeah there's no cliff edges we'll be fine and like there was one bit like the rock- Get rope out legit no we didn't have ropes right the rock was like this right and so Damn. i had to just slide down on my ass excuse me on the rocks just because it was the only way i could get down and like wow. really slowly like grabbing onto like bushes and stuff and then once we get like down halfway we're like oh that's the hard bit done there's like a wooded area and we was trying to get make our way to like there's like a road that run through it we got stuck in the woods and like we we just we took like the wrong turning <laughs> it was just like i was really hot and fed up we didn't know where we, like, we kept going down it was like yeah we'll reach the road eventually just didn't get one and like the shrubbery got thicker and thicker and then it was like wading through trees like literally like twigs everywhere it was like a trap like snapping all these twigs through the trees and like all the floors like super boggy oh, I should have filmed it it was like something you know like um, this sounds like something out of Bear Grylls mate like yeah, a Bear Grylls episode like people that get lost this could have been you you could have been one yeah. of those people what would what would you have done in this situation who were you, how many like, people were you with? It was just two of us. My mate was like, we'll just keep two going east. boys. We just Wandered keep going east. to the mountains one day. <laughs> <laughs> Got lost. <laughs> We're never seen again. Bear Grylls. Nah. But no, it was a problem. Mate, that, that sounds, uh, that sounds was, exciting and kind of scary. It, it was a good day. It all in all. We had amazing mm. weather in the end. It was just mm. just a bit ill-prepared because we weren't expecting it. Because it's Wales, right? So yeah. those who don't know, Snowden is in, or Snowden, it's, it is in Wales. It's a mountain Wales, area of Wales. It? Yeah, it's North Wales. Yeah, and so it's so, not the warmest of places. It's it's miserable. Like Wales, it's just not really miserable all the time. So you would not believe <laughs> the weather. Genuinely, it was it was awesome for Wales, but obviously nice. being unprepared was like that. But for those of you that haven't got the visuals, obviously in the pod, um, we, Scott has got what classically we coin it as a a t shirt tan. So when you take a t shirt off, his his I've only seen the up the arm i haven't seen anything else but you would imagine it looks like he's got a t-shirt imprint on his body now from sunburn but it's always good in future mate i guess for you to uh just doesn't matter the weather pack that sun, sun I'll give my skin is so f- like it's oh, not fair mate, sunburn I'm is pale yeah you are quite a fair a fair lad i'm just sun hits me i'm like yeah chris so, yeah, yeah I am. my brother's exactly like that. Yeah, Scott, my, my brother, also called Scott, exactly like great that. Name. Um, yeah, that's why maybe name. it's the name, maybe it is. Yeah, he's fair skinned, he does not uh, appreciate the sun, he he burns very easily. And then I'm, the on the day, other hand, very lucky. I, I, I tan very easily, so I, I never really burn, which is I'm so very I can't tan about mm. just, I just stay away from the sun. I've got a factor 50 on, which is like you Ooh. know. It keeps me nice and protected. Yeah. But, um, Gotta, yeah, I was just yeah, freaking out, worried about getting skin. sunstroke and fucking, but severely burnt, and I got severely burnt anyway. So it's just like, oh, that's a nice little story for us to get into today's pod, though, mate. 
What about you? You had a way more exciting weekend than I did. I was not up any mountains. I was not not making my way through any brush dressed like Bear Grylls. Um, I I went to a nine-year-old's birthday party. Um, (laughs) It's my nephew, so I I wasn't like I got a nine-year-old's birthday parties or anything. If anyone (laughs) (laughs) everyone's wondering, kind of weird. I just said it like that. But no, my nephew's uh, birthday party yesterday, so uh, we were there, and there was obviously um, a lot of kids, and uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of family there. So it was it was good, mate. Um, Had a crazy big old football game at the end of the uh, at the end of the day. So. Whipped Excellent. out my old Jordy Pele skills. And, Wanted to um, recreate the Newcastle game, did we? Another the, the, cracking the, game well, this weekend. He's, he's a Spurs fan, so oh, we could have oh, done from the week before. Oh. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mention it too much, to be honest. Um, I kind of felt bad for them, but no, it was good. And then, uh, other than that, mate, just just hanging around the house doing stuff that's been needing to be done for a while. So. Mm-hmm. And just hanging with the fam, so it's been nice. Just a bit chill, mate. I'm tired though. I'm I am tired, like you said, like you're tired. I don't know what. I just just tired, mate. But it's been super nice sun today, so I have been out in the sun, which has been good. Um, not too much Pokemon stuff over the weekend. Though. We had the Terror Raid event for Intellion that kicked off on um, that kicked off on Friday, which was interesting because of the move set on it specifically. Uh, it what did move have, did it have? Uh, Teary, Teary Luck was one of the moves. It had Mist as well, which I don't think anyone saw coming. So Mist stops any stat drops for five turns. Oh, uh, wow. So you can't uh, reduce its stats through like Metal Sound, Screech that you would normally see kind of implemented through uh, Terror Raids and stuff like that. So it was interesting. Um, and then the Teary Luck reduces the special attack and attack on your side of the field by two stages so just it meant like anything with defiant would be pretty Nile. amazing and to yeah nilip so nilip was the king once again into this raid uh unfortunately samurai didn't cut the mustard in it i did try a clear amulet one but it just doesn't really have the firepower to kind of get through it but not a hard raid at all i don't think uh, really, there's there's a bunch of viable options that you can take into Inteleon. So, uh, nice addition, though, to be added to Scarlet and Violet now, that uh, other Gen 8 starter that we've got, which hints at maybe things to come. And then, obviously, we had the, not that, not yet, we had the uh, Walk and Wake and the Iron Leaves Terror Raid start again today, as of recording this podcast, because we're recording this on Monday, the 1st of may happy may day mate and um yeah that's going to be running for two weeks for those that you are wondering for those that didn't get it the first time around when it went live in february and those of you that did get the chance to get it and had the glitch with the bad egg where you didn't update your game to 1.2 went into the raid and there was a bad egg and you caught it and then subsequently you couldn't actually get these pokemon because the bad egg counted as one of those pokemon the 1.3 update has adjusted that, and now you can go in with this new Terror Raid and catch both of these brand new Paradox Pokemon, mate. So I have been doing quite a bit of the raids. Obviously, I have rinsed my, all of my like candies, Terror Shards, ability patches, rinsed them all with the builds for last week. Uh, so I've got to try and replenish stocks, and that's what I've been doing just on the side here and there, mate. So, yeah. Excellent. Excelente, yeah. So other things that are going on though, we've got the Global Challenge 3, which is the next online tournament, which I give a sneak peek away. That will be happening this coming Friday. Registration's open until just before the tournament starts on uh, Thursday evening at um, midnight UTC time. And if you participate in this, you will, if you've linked your account, your play account, you can get championship points towards the official circuit, which is pretty good. Uh, there's 160 championship points up for grabs for first place in this one. Uh, and you can also get yourself an ultra Pokeball swag bag for your character in game. Uh, that, so that's based that on an ultra ball. Is that an ultra ball backpack? Yeah, I guess so. Um, is it really? Doesn't it really hasn't got the not... black stripe down it, has it? But yeah, it, I guess because the the top of it's yellow. I guess. I guess the straps could be counted as the black. 
Um, but you can get that if you complete three games in this, and it's the only way to get this exclusive item after the event. After you've done your three games in it, the the event finishes. You'll get a code in Pokemon Home, and then you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to uh, claim it that way through via Mystery Gift. So that is what is coming up this week. Of course, the Intellion Raid will be coming back for its second time this week as well. For those people that did miss it. Um, but not not too much else news, mate. Really, um, lots of speculation about home going on, of course, like usual, and so Scarlet and Violet. Uh, but nothing, nothing too much. But I did make this. I'm going to just try and see if I can share this. Um, let's see if I can just adjust. Or if I can, I think I have to stop sharing and then share again. Let's see if I can get this up. But I did make something in regards to the terror raids. Let's see, ah, here we go. Oh, let's just pull this up. So I made this little graphic, mate. Don't know. It's not. It's very, very basic. I didn't have much time to make it before the pod, but I thought I'd do it. So these are the ter the seven star terror raids that we've had in Scarlet and Violet so far. Um, we've had obviously the Charizard, the Pikachu. We've had Decidueye, Samurott, Typhlosion. Had Greninja. And then we've had Cinderace, and then the most recent one we've had in Teleon as well. So if we look at all of these, we touched on it a little bit last week. Uh, if we put them into groups, I'm going to say the outliers for all of the seven star terror raid events that we've had are the Charizard and the Pikachu from Gen 1. We know the data isn't in the games for Blastoise and Venusaur, so we can discount those. And I think the Charizard being a huge fan favorite alongside Pikachu makes sense for them to do them to kind of get the hype up around these seven star terror raid events. So I feel like they are definite mm -hmm. outliers. But if we look at the other Pokemon that have been in seven star terror raid so far, you can see the Decidueye, Samurott, and Typhlosion direct call to Pokemon Legends Arceus. They were the starter three in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So they're one group, right? Then we've got Gen 6 starters. We've had Greninja from that group of starters and then gen 8 is the other starter group that we've had from the seven star terror raid so far in cinderace and recently just in teleon so that leaves us three pokemon remaining which would be the chestnut and the del fox from gen 6 and then the rillaboom from gen 8 so this is the theory that these are the three pokemon remaining before we get potentially pokemon home and then after these three have been released pokemon home will come out and then they'll do whatever next phase with the seven star terror raids but it's going to be interesting to see next sunday after the intellion raid ends what the announcement is for the next seven star terror raid if it is one of these three the rillaboom del fox or the chestnut i would say this theory is a lot more solid than it, what it is right now yeah i mean as we discussed i mean we both think it's going to be a grass star right Mm. at this point because we haven't had one in a while um so yeah that would make sense i mean we're discussing how difficult potential terrifier really boom would be um yeah you know, because yeah. we haven't had particularly um anything super hard from the terror raids and i think it would be cool we're well, not cool well it would be cool if we had something more challenging um, I think we need something more, cha like r way more challenging. I think some of them are challenging, but not to the point that you we can't figure something out in like maybe an hour, an hour and a half after the raid drops. Do you know like, as I mean? we said, like what would you use against the terrifier really boom? Like because <sighs> you know, There's not very many things that you could use. Because okay, so it's not going to be it's not going to be weak to fire. Um, you need like a solid ice type. You can't use water no. against it. You can't use ice types. Ice not effective against fire, mate. Oh yeah. Oh my god. You can't you use water. The grass. Yeah, yeah. You can't use water. You can't use water because it just dies toward hammer. You can't use rock. You can't use rock. Um, One Pokemon that you could maybe use, and this is a real, real crazy throw out here, is Bombardier, because it does get that ability where it boosts uh rock type attacks and it isn't a rock type pokemon so you could potentially go with that and then tear a rock on it to get the like the double stab boost on rock type attacks mm -hmm. it's just whether or not it can take it will be it will resist the grass type attacks from rillaboom of course but rillaboom gets a decent a decent move pool so might get some options that are a bit awkward on there 
Yeah. Ground types you can't use, like you say, rock types you can't use, water types you can't use. Pretty stuck, really. And it gets grassy terrain, right? As yeah. Well. Yeah. Like, grassy glide. Nice recovery. It would be brutal. Like I say, like. Yeah. I think it'd be one of those things you could fit, like. I know people get annoyed about theorizing before race anyway, but like. <laughs> I don't think you could even theorize before this because, because I mean, you could obviously, but it'd be mm. way harder because you wouldn't, for something tough like that, you would just need to know. You just had to play it in order, like, you can't just call it how good something would be until you tried it. So you'd have to just wait until the actual raid come out. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff like Glamora, but the problem is it's like Glamora that you could take in there because obviously, with its poison type in, the grass is only neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, Rillaboom gets like uh, stump, it gets, I'm pretty sure it gets high horsepower. I don't know if it gets stomping tantrum, but it gets ground coverage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're pretty knackered in that situation. Um, and you can't really go with like an air balloon because <laughs> you just get, get hit once right and then, yeah. yeah, you'll just get bopped. So it is, yeah, it's a really, really difficult raid to go into, especially if it's got like something like Terra Blast, which you would. If it was fire, then yeah, it ha I would have to have Terra Blast because I don't think it gets fire coverage. That would be so out there though, because I think a lot of the Terra and uh, Seven Star Terra typings that they've they've come to so far, they've always had like a coverage move to kind of uh, back up that Terra typing. Like Inteleon was ice; it had Blizzard. Um, Cinderace was fighting; it had a fighting type attack. So none of them have really been relying on Terra Blast which would be interesting to see like one in the future where they do make it very difficult and they say, right, well, let's just go with fire and let's give it Terra Blast because Terra Blast is a thing and it could be an option uh, that these Pokemon could use. Let's make it really hard. Let's make it really hard. I think people would enjoy a, no, a would, way right? harder one. Challenge. Yeah, a way more challenging. Like, I think that would be better. Um, and figuring it out as well would be m way more satisfying, you know? Um, I think like the Typhlosion raid was a bit... I thought that might be a little bit better. You just want a raid where people don't just go, I can just use, like, because, you know, I know he's memed it a lot, but Iron Hands has been useful and yeah. Annihilate has Annihilate. also been really useful for yeah. a lot of raids. Like, you see comments, but like, I'm just going to use Annihilate again. Slowbro was also really good for a lot of raids. <laughs> yeah. We just kept using it because, yeah. like, I guess it's a meme, Annihilate, though. It's just like, I'm just going to use that again. It doesn't it's matter what the typing is. Yeah, because Rage Fist is just so good. Because it yeah. just doesn't reset when you... Like, the Rage Fist boosts don't reset when you get knocked out. So What does it max out at? Like, base? 300. That's insane. <laughs> 300 yeah. base attack. Especially you know? if you're, like, you know, you tear on top of that. And you've bulked up as well. Just die, yeah, basically. No. Stuff is just, yeah, gone away. It's the leap button. But yeah, I do find it interesting that this could... This could be... This could be... This could be what we see... I really, like, I believe this is what we see. And I think that would mean that we'll get Pokemon Home around the, it would either be the, the 12th, the week of the 12th of June or the week of the 19th of June. That's that's potentially what we could see, so. I mean, Pokemon could just throw a curb and just <laughs> like, a, you know, like a Gen 5 star and then we'll be like, well, Well, that's the other now? thing, isn't it? Yeah. You um, know, if we get a different starter, then... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, mate. But we'll see, we'll see. The back, you know, we've only got a week to wait. Well, this time next week when we do the pod, we'll know. Would it be announced this week or next week? Uh, so we this Sunday coming up. This Sunday. It'll be this Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Well, it'll be Monday morning for us. So yeah. it's normally around quarter past twelve. So just like yeah i just have to midnight so it's like monday morning very early uh when it drops when the news gets announced for the next terror raid we'll have to and see I doubt, yeah and i doubt they're going to do a spotlight a spotlight raid in between until this walk and wake kind of leaves one. one's yeah. finished i think that's going to tie up the, the kind of spots in the game until that so yeah but other than that mate not much happening in sword and shield that's pretty much everything up to date for us this week i know i keep doing that don't i i keep doing it it's just i don't know why as well because i haven't played yes. sword and shield yeah, no. <laughs> i haven't played sword and shield for the longest time mate i kept doing that as well we were having a conversation before mm. and i was like 
It's on a show. It's like, no, it's just gone viral. It's, it's <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. it's been, like I said, with the channel, it's just like a Pokemon's in a weird place at the moment because they're kind of between like, you know, if we had the DLC coming up in June, they haven't teased anything, have they, really? Yeah. They've been so like hush hush. It makes the lack it of, feel more the lack like of it's home September is like as well. super weird. You yeah. know, like we said, I mean, they said fall, right? So technically September would be fall, or even October, really. But I mean, we want to wait to October. I mean, they're waiting a long time, especially mm. if they are dropping, you know, some a new game next year. You know, then then they're looking at. I don't know. It just seems like I don't know whether it is. Uh, I would love to know what's going on internally. Whether it is just because of the problems they've had with the game, or whether yeah. it's whether this is, has always been the plan. But it feels like with the frustration of the fans, like it doesn't feel like this is planned. But also, you know, Pokemon never really. Care. They don't, they're not one to bow down to pressure. Nintendo, this Nintendo are the same. So it's just like, yeah, I can't just, see yeah, it. Keep I can't see it being. Something. Yeah, it's just like they don't, they don't really care. Like I say, Pokemon cards are selling out. And it's yeah. just like everything, everything's doing well. They're making loads of money, really. So yeah, that's it. You know, there could be a third DLC as well. You know, that that's the big thing. You know, the the I keep thinking, I'm like, okay, if they're releasing it in fall, the first one, which seems more plausible now like you know at the time when it got announced you think uh, could they follow the same kind of dates as isle of armor crown tundra like that june november release date but it like it's like you say we're like we're like in may now there's no way we're getting the dlc next month like it just it's not happening there's been no promotion for it outside of what we saw that sneak peek of the terpegos the pre-evolution the little t- baby turtle thing which was really no information and i feel like they only dropped that because it was revealed in the anime right it was like the was it the first or the second episode it was dropped in the the new and anime. it makes you think like have they planned if that was shown in like the first one or two episodes whatever episode it was at the beginning of the new anime are they planned to show other new stuff you know it goes back to this theory of well, is maybe. it all delayed would it yeah. was it all meant to line up yeah or have they now maybe. delayed the show's release in yeah like to line up with the delays that they've had with everything else. I feel like it's all all been lined up. I think like the only thing that would say you would say has been a bit of a a, a bump in the road is definitely the walking away guy and leaves raid. Unless you know they always planned because they're exclusive paradox Pokemon to do the raid event again like they're running right now for another two weeks for players that have just sold the games and missed out on them and it gives players another chance to get these Pokemon because they're not going to be available to catch in either DLC this is the only way you can get them I don't know I just feel like they're losing people a little bit I understand there's always low periods when the game comes out right because you're always going to have that gap between the next thing that they do Um, but kind of back to what we said before I guess this is why the DLC is important but Pokemon doesn't have sort of like it, does, it doesn't have a massive repay value and also like once you've played it like it's not really different the second time around mm. um, you know and you can't like once you've completed it there's no like well, your options are to complete the living deck really and catch shiny Pokemon you know yeah and do the old terror raid been, event when it drops it's been the biggest game that they've ever done really in terms of all the stuff they've had which is wicked but like I, like I just said, it's not like a regular like RPG game where you could apply like a thousand hours into it or it takes like a hundred hours to complete the main story. Mm. You know, you can still, again, it's still longer than previous generations, but it just... There isn't that much post-game stuff though, is no. it really? They seem really. to struggle, they struggled a lot with that really yeah. in recent games. Um, you know, like, like all they need to do is like, you know, like I always look back to Emerald and think, the battle factory was so good from that game like and they've never really redone it like they did in emerald i just think they did it in gen 4 didn't they as well similar thing uh, in the what, islands um, in the in platinum they had the um oh they did yeah they the sim it wasn't exactly the same but they didn't have the frontier brains and stuff like that did they but yeah no you could rent but they had one. something similar no i know what you mean yeah and then be, they had the, really the good, subway like, in black and white wasn't it yeah, like yeah. Like, yeah. 
imagine if like you had something like that, but for like competitive Pokemon, you could go in there and just build the team you want and test it. That would be insane. Like, because then be you want all so good. It, yeah. It'd be like the next step. It, it would make yeah. a lot of sense. Right? It'd be the next natural evolution, like rental teams, because rental teams are great. We never had anything like that before, because you can use rental teams on the battle spot ladder, right? Mm. But to just be able to like create like a proxy team that they let you use would be awesome. Because yeah. then, like I say, just like another alternative to Pokemon Showdown. Um, again, this doesn't ap- ap- apply to everyone, but I think it would add to the replay value a lot. Like I say, if you could, especially if it gave you like items or you know just just like little things, Pokemon, yeah, 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 exclusive stuff. Like, yeah, you know, you win a hundred like games, that. you win a hundred yeah. games, you get a Pokemon that you can't get in the game, type thing. You know, you unlock that little bit of post story type thing. Yeah, because there was stuff like that in Emerald. You know, you could get exclusive stuff. You could get like TMs and things like that that you couldn't get elsewhere. I just think, yeah. And you'd like, even going back to, was it Sun and Moon? Our Ultra Sun and Moon had the battle tree, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And like, it's just like that, just extra thing that they could just bung in and it would just keep players, just give them like, another, something else to do, right? So it was like the saving stuff for the DLC though. I well, yeah, but we thought that with like Sword and Shield and there was still not really anything after that, you know, after you complete the Crown Tundra and you complete the Isle of Armour, there was very little to do still in Sword and Shield. I mean, they made that second, like, tournament where you could go and rebattle all of the, the trainers again in Leon. But, like, I'm completely honest, like, by that point, when that got released, I think it was with the Crown Tundra, I, I still haven't done that. I still have that flag on my map in Sword and Shield because I'm just like... I've got no need to do it. It doesn't like give me like, it doesn't make me feel like I want to go and do it because there's no value in completing it, you know, other than that like self satisfaction of, oh, I've done that. Do you know it's hard I mean? because I guess, you know, the base game, you know, of face value is a kid's game, right? Pokemon. But it's also, it's a kid's game that's enjoyed by, you know, a lot of teens and also adults. So mm. you, it's, I guess it's hard to find the balance, but their core their core audience is kids, right? So, but most kids don't really care. They will play most things continuously because they just have that endless amounts of joy and you know. That's why I think like Legends Arceus was definitely different. Like it just had a different feel to it because it was like it didn't feel like it was like directly aimed towards that younger audience as well, or kind of you know with them at the in at the front of your mind. I mean, the fact that Pokemon and Pokemon Legends Arceus could attack you and you could actually, as a trainer, faint, you know, um, from a variety of different things. I think that, like, in itself, made it feel a little bit more better to play or a more mm-hmm. enjoyable experience. I don't know. Yeah, no. Yeah. You're right. It's just, it's just like, say, it's a weird one. They mm. just... It's so hard to tell... Like I say, they just hold so much back. You know, if we had the home, if we if we just knew what they were doing, or they just had like because they don't even release any kind of roadmap. They just say they're going to do stuff and then don't even do it on time. And it's just like it's so Pokemon frustrating. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> what's happening. I've you got know, that to talk about today, actually. Pokemon Sleep. It? So yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. But, but no, um, it's, it's, you're it's right short. though. There's no, there's no roadmap of anything it's just yeah and like you know we're kind of guessing like are we getting black and white remakes next year that's kind of the norm right but that might not even happen there's no guarantee you like a let's play johto you know that's never coming i don't think is it Why not? i mean i would i would love it right but the let's play games were really good yeah they were it's again, that. it's just I don't know. They just seem to do weird decisions. You do wonder whether it's like oh, it's hard because you're not going to appease everyone, are you? That's the biggest problem with everything. But mm. they just don't seem to be doing stuff that is beneficial, beneficial, <laughs> like it's good for like you know the majority of the player base. It doesn't seem that way, at least. What like the easy cash grab stuff? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like yeah, yeah it's like. It's like the, it, it's a no-brainer cash grab, and no one's even worried about it being a cash grab because it's just fan service and people want it. So it's like, take my money, I want to enjoy this, you know. It's like easy for them to do. They don't need to think of these. They just, they just cling on to the nostalgia element. I mean, this, mm. this Pokemon game, one, isn't it? 
yeah, this Pokemon, if you've seen, I think it was teased a while ago actually, but I just saw it again. This like Pokemon trading card game classic. Oh, yeah. Set. Yeah. Like the board game set. and decks are in there. Like the cards look sick. And you know it's going to sell like hotcakes. It's going to sell out and it'll just become a collector's piece because this Gen 1. They did a lottery for it, didn't they? In okay. Japan. And it's, yeah, I think it's like, I don't, yeah. I think they did. You know, they normally do. They open it up and they do a lottery for it. So if you get selected, you can get it. I think it's uh, that they might do another one. So it's not a pre. It's not a, a made-to-order product. So they're not just taking a bunch of pre-orders and then making sure everyone gets one. Uh, it is going to be limited. Like the borders are like super special. Like this isn't. Yeah. This really, isn't what the this, cards actually look it's like. Super nice. Like if I just make this a little bit bigger, you can. I think we can skip forward. It's a proper bougie advert. I mean, the decks look sick, but, you know, it's just like... Cards are going to be like that, though, as well. So they'll have a different, like, back to them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're different. Yeah. The uh, counters are cool, though. Yeah. Very cool. But, yeah, I think the cards have a different border on them. They're not... They like, do. Like, shiny. Yeah. Um, they're a bit more like um, the 25th anniversary, like, bordered cards that we got from the, Jap the Japanese set, the 25th anniversary set. But, uh, yeah, there's lots loads of uh, old cards but they're not all just gen 1 ones they're like no, there's like Lugia and Sweet Coon as well I saw that and a ho yeah. yeah as well I mean I really want it yeah I mean <laughs> this is the thing know. right they just release stuff and you know who we're gonna buy <laughs> yeah, yeah so they do do it they just don't do it enough you know it's probably a good thing because it'd be very poor otherwise you know yep. but I really hope we we do get black and white remakes. And I don't even care if Ilka... I know Ilka gets such bad press for BSP, but I don't even care if they make it. I just really want to play a remake just, of black and white on the Switch. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. Unless they're saving but, it for the Switch Pro. But, or Switch maybe, 2, whatever. Maybe. Yeah. I'm so you interested to see how well Tears of the Kingdom... It's like next week, isn't it? Um, Tempest, isn't so it's on the 12th. On oh, the 12th. 12th. So yeah, week Friday. Ooh. Yeah, if it runs, I ordered. Like I ordered as well, mate. I, uh, I when it first uh, the pre-orders came out, I ordered I pre-ordered the um, the collector's edition because I was like, I really want the collector's edition, oh. um, and it was it was actually quite reasonable because I've seen pre-orders recently for the collector's edition, and it's nearly double the price for what I paid, and I'm like, what? That's you got him before stuff. everyone else. So that's the thing. Yeah. So I got it like day one when it when it dropped and I was like going to just lock it in because I was like thinking about I was like I really want the OLED switch but I'm like I can't justify getting Buying another because, one because <laughs> you've already got the OLED Skull and Violet one haven't you? Yeah and I'm like I can't because the, the Switch 2 is around the corner and I'm better off just keeping the, the, the money oh, that think we so. go to that and then go to Switch 2 as much as I would like the the Zelda OLED. To be honest, I would probably just keep it sealed. That's what I would do with it. But and at the, the, at the time, I was like, should I just cancel the collector's edition and just get the regular game because it's like half the price, pretty much? But I was like, nah, nah. I'll just stick with what I've got. So yeah, but yeah, the twelfth, mate. A bit of a a bit of a tangent there. We went on twelfth a week on Friday. Tears of the Kingdom will come out. I'm very excited for it as well. Well, yeah, It'll be good. I just I hope. But yeah, interested out. to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't, then you know they better hurry up with that switch release. Switch next generation. The backlash should be way worse than what it was for anything that Scarlet and Violet got. Because I feel like the 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 hardcore Zelda fans are gonna that would create. Well, they've also worked it riot. longer, right? So you would expect it to run well. Yeah. Yeah. With the Pokemon games, they at least have the excuse of they don't have mm. enough development time, which is... The thing is, enough. yeah, with Zelda as well, it has a way higher bar on how the games operate, how the games feel, how the games look, everything like that, you know. I think there's yeah. a lot of expectation with where Pokemon players want the game to be. But in reality, you kind of don't expect too much, right? Yeah, you just, you know... You know? <laughs> I feel like we make excuses every time the games come out. Well, um, that is you know, one thing, probably true. When Sword and Shield come out, everyone was like, yeah, it doesn't look amazing. 
but they're trying some more interesting things, so we like it. <laughs> and then these games come out, and you're like, well, it looks like a PS2 game, but you know they're trying some cool things. So you know, maybe maybe the next game will be good, and the next one will look like it was you know made them for Atari or <laughs> PS1. It'll it'll be the blocky look of like Tomb Raider. Be so bad. Yeah. So Mate, you're so you're so right though. But we'll have to yeah. You know, I don't think there'll ever be a day where we'll get a, a roadmap of what's to come, though. That's the thing. I think we're just stuck in this. Um, right, I'm just going to pull me up on the screen until Scott's sorted so himself I, so out. I, so I've sorted it. Oh, you so. have sorted yourself out. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this purgatory. I'm saying we're probably just going to be in this purgatory of not knowing what's going on in the Pokemon world for... I feel like it will just Whatever. be, like I mentioned before the pod, it will just be like, we're going to have nothing for like a couple of months and then all of a sudden we'll have loads. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it's normally the way, isn't it? It's normally... It's just a pain in the palm. There's never like a steady trickle of like no. interesting stuff. They're just like, yeah, you can wait. But then they'll also do loads of stuff at once and it'll be like... Yeah. Trailer, trailer, trailer. Tra- trailer, trailer. Here's all the DLC. So is that what you're going to get? And be like, what the hell? And you can buy the DLC right now. You can play it right now. It's right actually now. coming out now. This. Yeah, like, it's what? available now. We're dropping home and both DLCs on the same day. Everyone just <laughs> freaks out. It's like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, that, that was one of the things. There was that rumor on 4chan about the uh, the, the home compatibility release date with Scarlet Violet of the 12th. And then, yeah, it's not going to happen on the same. Could you imagine if it happened on the same day as Tears of the Kingdom? Raging war, it wouldn't happen. What, I don't think, what, home? I don't would. think home would be a massive deal, but it wouldn't make sense, like I say, because it just spreads out hype. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see next Friday. Maybe, Maybe they'd just be like, YOLO, home is here. Maybe. Um, yeah. But, mate, okay. you mentioned a good thing about it being more directed for kids. There was an interesting article you found. I'll let you lead the line on this one. You could fill us all in about this and to our listeners at home. Essentially, there was um, a car shop in Japan because, as we mentioned last week on the pod, stock of the Japanese sets, they've just in Japan, they've been selling out of all like all the products, all the all the trading card game products. Um, and, you know, a bit like almost like the shortages we had during COVID where you couldn't buy stuff. It's kind of like that in Japan now, basically. Um, and I found this interesting article talking about um, a shop in uh, the Aki, Akibara district um, in Japan, basically, which was just like, yeah, we're only selling, we're, we're banning adults and guardians from buying cards so that the kids can enjoy them more. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, it's not like all of the stuff, I think they're allocating like half of their stock like to make sure that basically that kids can have them and that well, guardians okay. can't buy them either. But it's still like a good idea. I just think... I thought if you're a parent though going in, like you your kid's birthday is like on the weekend and you're going in rocking up and being like, you know, I've got I'm gonna get them. I know they want this new set. I'm gonna get them a booster box of it. They're gonna be so hyped with it. And the guy at the counter is like, No, we're not we're not selling to you. Yeah, but you know, I, you know, it's one of those things you just send the kid in and I buy it, but you know. Yeah, sorry, 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 so no daughter. Your, um, outside. Your, your, birthday, your birthday present uh, surprise is no longer a surprise. Can you go in this shop and just buy your present for me? They won't allow me to buy it. But yeah, yeah I do get it. I do get it. I get it because it stops scalping and things like that, right? And it does. They ID allow you as well. Our course says that they ID you to make sure that you're under 18. What? Yeah. There's, so. there's going to be people, you know, there's going to be fake adults. IDs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> just the opposite way, they want like a younger ID so they can yeah. book Oh, that'd be so Make funny. Make love in, in the, Jap- the, Jap- uh, the Japanese world. Make love in. Oh, that'd be <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, they're gonna be. There's gonna be like adults just you know paying off kids just to go in and buy them Pokemon cards, though, isn't it? That's such a weird turnaround. It's normally the other it's way. Be like the, yeah, Can you buy me cigarettes, please? It's like, no. It's <laughs> just asking a child to buy Pokemon cards. Can you please go on the shop? <laughs> I really need these new Pokemon cards, man. It's just like giving a child like a thousand pound. It's like, just go. I'll pay, you, I'll pay you loads of money. Just go buy me as much as you can, man. You know what's happened. You know it has happened, I, man. I need my fix, baby. Yeah. Talking about 
TCG though, the new new set has been announced, obviously. Paldea Evolved coming on the 9th of June, I believe. So it's not too far away, just a month around the corner. Um, and there's been a bunch of cards uh, released as well. For It's really set. frustrating because I always I always want to buy the cards, but it just gets so expensive, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's like getting it, a booster box. It's going to give us... Is it going to give us the, there you uh, go. It's not doing the gallery though, which is a little bit annoying. There we go. So we okay. can have a look at some of the cards. I mean, they're, they're all right. The, the Warshen EX is coming out. Paldean Taurus as well. That's cool a card. really nice artwork. Really nice. Go to the full arts and stuff. Yeah, the full arts are the more one. I think there's a, f yeah, there's a bunch of EXs. The full arts in this set are insane. Though. Yeah, the star they're ones are really cool. cool. Look at that. You know, that one's going to be beautiful. A big one. Mm hmm. And then you've got the Florgato and then Fio Coco. I mean, that is that's it's really cute. Yeah, it's that's yeah, very nice. Very nice. And then the Raichu one. I think we've seen some of these on in the Japanese sets that we went over either last week or the week before. But what I like about these is that they're they're really cool cards, really one. but they're also the one we've seen. they're also not like unobtainable, like they're kind of easy to pull, if it makes sense. And they're not like super rare. So you know. to get them if you like the artwork, you can get them quite easily. But that 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 one is so nice. That yeah, Iona one, card. Yeah. so cool. Yeah, it's cool. So that set's coming out, like I say, on the ninth. And um, then it got rid of you there, mate. Uh, yeah, so that's that's something to look forward to uh, for all you TCG players out there. And um, yeah, it looks like a good set. It's going to be a strong set again, I think, from the full arts, like you say. And like you say, with the better pull rates now, they're not massively difficult to uh, to get. But if you want to buy the singles, of course, wait a little while before you pick them up after the set drops. Don't I've, um, rush in and buy them straight away. You'll be paying top dollar, top dollar for them. I've decided to keep my Miriam because... Oh, yeah, you were going to sell it, weren't you? ...who bought it, and I tried to sell it, but the person who bought it on eBay did not pay me, so I've decided to keep it. I'm going to buy those called card frames that that guy on Etsy yeah. sells and put it in one of those. It's maybe a sign, mate, you know? Yeah, I mean, it has a small print line on the back, which is really annoying because I would have got a graded otherwise. There's like a, a really like annoying like dotted line across the middle of the back of the card. That's Never weird. seen it on a Pokemon card before. And I wonder if the guy that bid on it didn't realise it. Because it. the guys, this is what I hate about eBay, is that people bid on stuff without reading the comments. And I put it in the comments, and you can mm. see it on the pictures as well. I was like, look at it on the picture. This is what it is. And it's just like, oh, like I wonder if that would affect it from getting a grade, like a, like a 10. Probably it's, would. It's not like super noticeable, because I didn't notice it at first. And then when I was taking a picture, I was like, oh, that's kind of annoying. Yeah. But, you would yeah. imagine that would grade it down. But you never so know. Right. Never know, mate. Yeah. And yeah, outside of that, there's not been a great deal of stuff happening this week in the Pokemon was, world. Um, we could look oh, at... Golf Fest got announced, didn't it? Golf oh, yes. Fest did get announced. There was a bunch of dates for Golf Fest. So that's that's something for all you Pokemon Golf fans to look forward to. We've got London happening in August. I think it's August the 4th to the 6th, I believe. Yeah, in Osaka as well in uh, Japan as well from 4th to the 6th. Uh, so uh, that's the week before Worlds, I believe, this year um, in Japan. So if any of you going over to Worlds in Japan, uh, hit up Osaka uh, the week before and you'll be able to take part in Go Fest over there on the uh, August the 4th to the 6th, which is very cool. And at the minute, if you are taking part or interested in Go on, you can get early bird tickets. So they're a little bit cheaper than they would normally be. And they're all for all of the dates that uh, the event is running on, of course. And How does it uh, work? Uh, you can rock up. I think you can get a morning or an afternoon slot on the on the days. And then they, they normally put like, the Antic normally put a lot of, um, I've never actually been to one myself. I've only seen videos and heard uh -huh. people that went to them. But they normally put up a lot of like, big promotional stuff and kind of stuff in the park where they're holding it. I think it's in, where is it in London? It's, um, Ramblin Park is it or something? Uh, Blon uh, Brockwell Park in London where it will be held. Um, so yeah, they'll put loads of stuff up in there in the park there for the players to kind of, um, get involved with. And then you get like set amount of like raid pass stuff and other, other things like that. And you can 
have these like the raid lever you can get this ticker here up to 18 free raid passes per day by spinning in photo discs at the gyms and you get a lot of other stuff so it's a pretty big thing and you get a lot of gold players going i'd imagine i'd something i do want to do at some we point could go. we could go i would love to go mate that would be that would be amazing should we go be fun let's go i would love to go we go like be the newbies of pokemon go walking around Get with our brand new brand new pokemon go i mean i haven't played it in so long <laughs> no just I, download the app. But like, how do I you do. play this game guys i just seen this online i put a lot of time in um last year and leveling up is really difficult on it like when you're a higher level uh-huh mine's not mine's not allowing me to log in right now so i can't see but i think i'm around 30 ish something like that so yeah it's a lot of fun i would love to do something like that it'd be good but then that that is happening later this year friends so if you're going to go first let me know let us know down in the comments which one you're going to obviously more than likely a lot of you probably going to the london one if you're listening in um uk and europe and then i think the us one is in new york and it happens a little bit later and that will be from the 18th to the 20th of august um so that will be happening a little bit later on um in august in new york so that'll be for everyone in the us that will be insane as well that would be now if there's one to go to that would be the one i mean i'd love to go to the one in osaka as well you know it'd be great to do all three to be honest maybe next year yeah Go to the London one on the Saturday. Fly out to Osaka so you can get the one. No, we would, be nice. You'd have to go on the Friday. You'd have to fly and do the one in Osaka on the Sunday. Do Worlds the next week and then fly direct from oh. Japan to New York to do uh, the one in New York to It'd finish up August. be a very expensive couple of weeks. <laughs> It'd be very, very expensive, yeah. It'd be very fun, though. Yes, it would. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing I had really that I was going to talk about today, you know, we talk about timelines, we talked about things being delayed unexpectedly and stuff like that. And I did mention it, but Pokemon Sleep, I do want to say that the, the Twitter account has been a little bit more active recently. We do know that Sleep is supposedly coming this August. Whether or not that will happen or not, I don't, I don't know, mate. But like I said, Who's this um, for kids? I don't really know. I don't really know. I think that if we watch the advertisement of it, right, I'm just going to refresh this. It'll show a little video of Pokemon Sleep here for us. And I think it's I think it's aimed at everyone because the demographics, when you're looking at the advert here, is a, is a range of different... It's mainly adults. ...age people, yeah. So I don't know, you know. I guess it would probably be more adults because I think... You know, you're not going to get like a five-year-old that cares about how much sleep they have. They're just wanting to go to sleep, right? But like, how's it going to work? Like, you just put your phone in. Like, it would co- it'd be cool if it had like, you know, like um, Apple Watch, like an Apple Watch app or something. Or I think they've app. talked about there's going to be like, it's going to be almost like a poker walker kind of device that you're going to get. Uh, do you know the poker walker? It's not a poker walker. It's like the Pokeball Plus device that you get in Pokemon Go. Uh-huh going to be a similar device to that that works with pokemon sleep i think so it um, just goes on your bed doesn't it? it doesn't go on your wrist or anything yeah i don't let's have a look let's see yeah that's it yeah. Pokeball plus yeah pokeball go pokemon go plus gets a power up uh so that's what you must have to use with it so i don't know whether you'll ha- you'll only be able to use it with this or whether you can get an app and just use the app and use like an apple watch like you say with it but now in Pokemon, it'll probably be like, yeah, you can download the app, but you can't use it without this. You've got to pay. Like, where's this take us to? How do you feel about, just it? talking about this, how do you feel about um, them doing something like the Poker Walker again? The Poker Walker? Yeah, they come out with Let's Go. Uh, Let's the one go. that came out with Hot Gold, Soul Silver. Silver. Yeah. I would love it. I think it's a really cool idea. Yeah. I haven't it's again. It was, uh, I haven't done anything cool like that in so long. No, they haven't. They haven't well, I guess you have the like Pokemon that. Plus now, which is kind of the same thing. But like, you could see the Pokemon. It was so. It was so. Mm. Like, it's such a small thing. Yeah. Like, just to be able to like, I remember taking it to school. The stuff. It was just so sick. I've got one up there. Just like I don't know. I got two. Got my brother's one as well. So it's nice. 
Yeah, they're so cool, mate. They're so cool. I wonder what Pokemon like, I have imprisoned on there for years. <laughs> yeah, so really and, Pokemon. Uh, that's what, literally, I was just thinking that. I wonder what's in there. But you used to get like exclusive uh, move, uh, egg moves for Pokemon if you had them in there and things like that. So it was like a real kind of like novelty, but there was like a reason behind doing it as well, which is really cool. I would love them to do something like that again. But like you say, they've never done anything like that for such a long time. Like anything unique, they've, they've just been a trying. bit. Stop trying. Stop trying. They even have like, a little bit. Even like the consoles, like I don't even think, I don't even think the Scarlet and Violet version of the console is that good. Like I just feel like, I I understand that the the Switch is a more expensive like console compared to like the DS, even like the 3DS and stuff. But they just the designs that they they used to do loads right of they do like an exclusive version for like pretty much every game I know we do get but we only really get it for the main games but even yeah. like the uh, the the they didn't do one for Sword and Shield did they they just did an, a they just did a, a Switch Lite didn't they yeah they did the same with Diamond and Pearl and that was crap yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was so bad like mm. just do something really cool like make it clear do like bold colour just, just, they just seem to be like do something like, different yeah yeah they just don't innovate or try anything no, they just, they just, they just, I don't know if they just care anymore. The Poker yeah. Walker was peak. I wonder if that's one of the things what makes it like one of the the most loved games as well. You know, it just adds to it that like a little bit extra to Hot Gold Soul Silver. It's just like an added thing. You know, you didn't need like it to play the games, but it was a version just- of that. But it was like a, a like a, a Pokeball, just like a like the like the people would still pay for it, even if it was like. 50 quid more expensive but like it was a Pokeball that opened up like, you know, like the um, Let's Go controllers that they got the Pokeball Joy-Cons that they made oh yeah just like that sort of size and you could keep a Pokemon on it that'd be cool but yeah. I don't who knows I mean, you just don't care anymore it's, just, it's a really frustrating time to be a Pokemon fan it's frustrating mm-hmm. because the worst part about it is that <laughs> they've got you anyway so it doesn't matter what they do we're still going to be excited for it but it's also very. It's, it doesn't take away from the frustratedness of it, you mm. know. They could just do a little bit more. They could just make a Scarlet and Violet app for like Android and iPhone, right? And just have some like compatibility, just some like extra gameplay feature. You could have a Poker Walker app for your phone, where you could, you know, get exclusive egg moves and stuff like that. That just anything would be anything like where super. you could get stuff that you can't get, yeah. or like even if it was grindy, it was just something you could do. Mm. You know, just, just away from your console, right? Yeah, yeah. Just something, any, anything different. I guess they they expect players to kind of like because it is a portable console. But I guess the the DS was right. The DS was something that you would very very portable. Yeah. yeah. So, Time. but you wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I would rather take a little companion toy, whatever you want to call it, a pedometer or something around with me, as opposed to like my whole Switch, though. Yeah. Same. It's way more expensive. Mm. I think that was the beauty of it. You wouldn't have to take your DS around with you. Um, that's way more expensive. You could just take the little Pokeball that come with it. And it came with the game as well. It's just, it's yeah. just different times, man. I, like, could you buy the game without it, though? I don't think... Oh, could you? I think you must have been out. Sure. I don't know, but just it was just so good. I just want to do something with it again. We don't get any of the cool stuff. We don't get the coloured cartridges. We don't get the Pokemon no. cart. It's just when I look up at my shelf as well of my Pokemon games, it's always the one that sticks out to me the most because it's that it's a it's a way thicker box compared to everything else. I mean, it just always stands out, and I'm just like, yeah, look, it just looks big, better, you know, because it has got the Pokewalker in. Maybe we're just old. Maybe it's what happens when you get old. You just complain. <laughs> Why isn't it complain like about? This? Yeah. It was better. It was better back then. Yeah. No. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe we're on to something now. I feel like we're more on to something than not, to be honest. I don't feel like we're complaining either, you know? It's justified. I guess you can't. They shouldn't have, have done such a good job in the first place. And if they did do such a good job, they should have kept up doing that good job, right? Yeah. I, it makes me think, like, you know, is all of this stuff limited to the capability of the switch right because i genuinely feel like you know uh, the next a next gen version of it because there's rumors 
they've just released there's this um AMD are developing this Zen 1 processor which is going in the ROG Ally it's like a Steam Deck competitor so you know that handheld Steam console that I was telling yeah, you about yeah. before yeah and the ROG uh, ally is meant to be um, like a, a competitor to that Steam Deck, but it's got this um, Z1 processor in it that is supposedly also going in the Switch, rumored. Um, and it would be like such a game changer for like for the Switch as well. And you know, I feel like they are very limited with the crappy hardware. And maybe if they had that flexibility, it would make them be like, oh, we could do this, we could do that. But whereas at the moment they're just so concerned with trying to make sure that trying to improve the games but also trying to make sure that it runs really well yeah uh, i guess like, that's a really hard thing to do isn't it like when you're dealing with like just the base software and the the switch but the thing is though i think it's been proved by like a number of people i've mentioned on the pod before you know uh custom firmware switches that have been overclocked run scarlet and violet fine so that is possible to do it on the current software you know that was on an oled was it on an oled i don't know but regardless, it can be done and it runs immaculately. So it's hard because you have to get that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just really intrigued to see how powerful it will be because it is one thing that's laying it down. I understand that it's a different target audience than an Xbox and the PlayStation, but that's not an excuse anymore for it. The hardware being just crap. Yeah. You just know? needs backwards compatibility as well with Switch games, I think. That's a big thing. Yeah. Just do that. do that. Yeah, yeah. I watched a hilarious video the other day. This is a little bit of a sidestep, mate, but there was a a, a, a short I watched the other day of uh, a guy saying, can a Nintendo 3DS game work on a Nintendo DS? And he does the little thing. He's trying to put it in the DS, but he's like, the ridge is in the way. So the, the cartridge is on the 3DS. Yeah, he literally, he's like, throws it down and he's like, gets all these tools out and then just like cuts it off, puts it in, nothing works. Yeah, it doesn't work. But it still runs on the, the 3DS when he puts it back in there. It's quite a funny video. Weird. Yeah, yeah. So. But again, it'd be like, imagine if like the next console, it had like, they just whipped in loads of ports, right? So you could play every single old game on it. So you could you could play DS games on it. You could play 3DS games on it. You could play GBA games on it. But the I don't think they'll ever do it because they're trying to push this stupid bloody online system that is crap. That no one wants to buy, but feels like they have to buy because it's the only way you can go online to do anything on their stupid ecosystem. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, I don't care. It would be so much cooler if they just put a slot in, you know, just like, oh, like you could do like yeah. a multi purpose slot that was just a larger slot that did all, all the right way back to the bloody DS games. You could do it, it'd be easy. One size, so it would fit them all, just different grooves or whatever. You could have the Shaun and Shield one. Maybe forget about the older games. Maybe, maybe just do it for the from like the DS onwards, and then you can have the Switch Online for all of the GBA games and all of the original Game Boy games and Pokemon Stadium and stuff like that. That's fine. Just, just mm. do something cool. The Switch. I just want them to like release the old games, like like the classic games on on the online service I just like you've got this online service people are paying for it like just release the old games like it's obviously what everyone wants like all Pokemon fans want these old games I was thinking the other day I was like I really want Pokemon Emerald because it's the one game I don't own but like to buy it it's like crazy expensive and I'm like do I buy it now just to play it or do I wait because there might be a chance that it comes onto the online service. But I don't think they've ever re-released like Emerald. I don't think that's been a game that you could like, I don't know if that was available on the eShops before they closed. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Just do some, just like I said, just do some wild limited edition Game Boy. Just like people yeah, go that is it. Yeah. nuts for this shit. Sell, re-release <laughs> the original games with the fucking cartridges. People would just go wild. I would yeah. buy one. I wouldn't even play it. I'd just fucking buy one just because. Like, it would be so good. Like, I just it, it's, it just feels like a no-brainer. It'd be, yeah, you'd it get is. All these people that haven't played Pokemon in years that'd be like, oh my God, I remember playing that on a GBA or like an original game of color. I really want to get that. What? You can get the original games again. That'd be mad. Just like, have you seen the Game Boy players you can get for um, for PC? It's like a USB. No, have you seen 
you can buy like ROM hacked version of GBA games now with like custom um, GBA cartridges yeah. and stickers on. They look wicked. You can get them on like Etsy and stuff. This is it here, mate. I'll put it up. This is oh wow, me. yeah. You can get it, cool. them like for like I think they, they you can get them that they'll play like early advanced like games and stuff like that it's really cool actually like i'm really thinking about getting one because you can put like your pokemon games into it and you can back up the save on them so if like the battery goes then you've still got oh. the save on your pc so That's then sick. you can replace the battery in the cart and the card and then you can import the save back onto it so you never essentially lose it because the battery goes on it then you you essentially lose whatever save was on there which is really sad so that's a way for like the older games where you could kind of make really good use of it, but then you can play it on your PC as well, which is which is pretty cool. But it's like an emulator, it like emulates the software. It doesn't like it's not a, it's not a direct player, you know, um, and it detects counterfeit cartridges as well, which is pretty interesting. I think it's a pretty neat little little gadget, really. Yeah, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. How hard it would it be for them to just bring something like this out? Or just have an adapter for the Switch or something else. I don't they know. They do some really cool stuff. Like if you look back at all of like <laughs> the um all the, like the cardboard stuff that they did, um I can't remember what it was called. Oh um, yeah, the um I can't remember its name, but I know what you mean. All of that you cool make, stuff. Like a little piano and stuff yeah, like that. The and program, keyboard. That was wicked. The the Ring Fit Adventure is actually a really cool concept. Like they do come up with some really wicked ideas, but I just you know like, Nigel used the, the Wii Fit. Yeah, I know, to lose loads of weight. He's lost loads of weight. He got himself in really good no, shape. No, like, a mate, he looks insane. amazing like, now. Yeah. That was just from Ring, Ring Fit. It's, so, it's like so like inspirational, like watching it, like seeing him, seeing him from the start when he was talking about that's what he was going to do to after he's kind of done it and the transformation in that process. Crazy good. I remember seeing him and I was like, you know, what have you been doing? It's like, we did not believe him when he said Ring Fit. I was like... <laughs> But it's quite like quite yeah. it's really good for cardio. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, just, just do something cool, Pokemon. If you're watching, listening, I know you are. Someone's <laughs> gonna be watching, please be watching. Just do something cool, please. <laughs> no one's watching, mate. They no will, one's we'll, watching. Let's send it to them. Okay. <laughs> you must know someone. Let's just send it to it's burn a CD, burn a DVD it. and send it to them in the post. <laughs> important important information just accidentally play this part of the pod on your next stream when you're casting you're like oopsie <laughs> give us a new, give us something cool make the classic Game Boy but with Do it. GBA compatibility we're giving you yeah. ideas for free hire us for your mm. development team we'll just Can you imagine though them. they made it right they made it remade it right like this probably improved the screen put an OLED screen in there right had a USB port in the bottom so you could connect it directly to your PC so you had video out. You could then have uh, the slot here which fits in all the old cartridges and then you have a slot up here which fits like DS cartridges or something. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm dreaming here but it would be amazing, right? Smaller than my phone this as I well. Want, I was so I surprised want, I when I got it back. console like that is literally like I don't care about phones. Phones aren't retro. They're so like boring technology now like mm. give me that old i want to put it in my pocket backpack kind of vibe indie this game. is very this has been very cool since they since i got it back and playing it it's been very cool like just the size of it alone it's just it's just so small like i forgot how small it was but it literally fit in your pocket super fine that's what i missed but, with with the yeah, um with the it's ds's very it's very when, cool like the little you know fold the screen up like yeah, i said the, the, the original ds like and oh, any, no, the DS, you know, yeah. even like the SP versions, they were just the smaller than phones. Yeah. You could put them in your pocket. It was just so good. Just listen to us, Pokemon. We're giving you million dollar ideas here. This would literally make you so much money. How would so, everyone feel? I want I want to hear some comments about this. Like, would everyone would everyone buy one if they came out with like re relaunched like the GBA, say? I think the GBA would make sense because you can play Game Boy games on that, right? So how would everyone feel about a GBA, like a classic GBA celebration of it being launched again with a line of titles along with it, the hard physical cartridges re remade, relaunched? I'm telling you, every they would they would sell out. They would sell out instantly. It'd be yeah. so hard to get. 
so but, good. And they could, yeah. It's free it's money. You, it's free money. It's free money, Nintendo. <laughs> it's free Pug money. One, listen to us. It literally it's is. I know you print money, but use that printed money to make even more free money. Yeah. Because you could then, you for it. Yeah, because then you could like do all of the, the custom cases and things like that. Oh, you could just go to town on it. All the improvements, the little improvements they could make to it, that would be like so much cooler. Like probably not good for the environment, right? And they're probably arguing like it's easier if we just release them on the eShop because it's less plastic, right? I don't think Nintendo gives a crap about the environment, to be honest with you. Probably not. As much yeah. as I would like to think that they would, I don't think they do. No. They can make it out of recycled stuff if they really wanted to. They were really that would be it. very cool. It uh, would still be like recycled. Yeah. And it'd be good marketing as well. So Yeah. If you use that Nintendo, just send us some free stuff, please. That's all we want. <laughs> just send we'll us one. We'll give you good send reviews. Us one one if you make one it. One each, please. <laughs> with each copy of the games. But um, yeah, no. That'd be good. I think got anything cool. else, yeah. mate, this week? What about Scott's, Scott's lucky bag? What have we got in the lucky bag this week? Oh, there's not There's not really anything in the oh, lucky mate. bag. Oh, mate. There was some guy, the only thing that I did find, there was a guy on Reddit that found we all of it. Why is it called it the lucky bag? The lucky bag. Oh, yeah. It is the you, goodie bag. You were trying to come up with like a name, wasn't you? Yeah. Um, this guy on the, I think it was a Pokemon subreddit. Let me try and find it. Had he found a box full of all the old Pokemon game boxes? They didn't have the games in them, however, because it was like I'm gutted that they don't have the games in them. But also, I had a good childhood. But he kept all the boxes. Let's see if I can find that. And someone also, um, this is really cool. Let me share this with you. Someone, I'll send it on Discord. Someone crocheted a massive Snorlax. Let me put it on the Pokemon subreddit. It's wicked. Um, while well, I look for this I'm other one, you this. can show this. Crocheted a huge Snorlax. Pull this up then. Let's have a look at this. What? Mm -hmm. That is insane. It's mad, isn't it? How cool is that? I made a huge life size Snorlax. I've never done anything like this before, but it was a fun adventure. I used Bernat Extra Thick Blanket Yarn, close to 30 scans. I have no idea what the uh, the ins and outs of crocheting are, but these sound complex. And around 70 pounds of stuffing. Wow, that is, yeah, that is a lot of stuffing. He weighs around 110 pounds. That's crazy. That is amazing, though, isn't it? That is so that heavy. Is, <laughs> that is incredible i love it that must have taken so long to do so mate i must <laughs> i don't know how long that took yeah i know <laughs> that is amazing fair play to whoever's done that i love that first comment he's blocking the path <laughs> you're blocking you can no longer leave your room now that's I amazing this, i love I that this other thing, don't but... find it Letting us down. Is that is that all going to get for Scott's goodie bag this week? Yeah, you know, you just got to keep you on your toes, you know. Yeah. I might have loads of things for you next week. <laughs> you definitely will, because like, you're like, I'm going to be prepared next week for this one. I did, no, I did, I no, did just throw it at you, out of the blue. I didn't, um, yeah, it wasn't, again, just like struggling think, to get stuff at the I've moment. I not anything exciting, at least. I think it's a good place to sort of close out the pod to be honest, for this week let's not ramble on because we tend to ramble at the end of the podcast but you know if you're listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts because um, they seem to be the main ones people listen on please leave us a review it would help us a lot and we really appreciate anyone listening at the moment because last week's episode did really well and um, well, yeah we just we love doing this we love spending time with each other we love doing the pod we like reading all the comments as well the comments are always really lovely so um, thank, yeah, you thank you for everyone listening and um, big, big thank you hopefully Massively we'll have some more news to talk to you about next week so yeah and if we don't we will have a specific topic that we've got we've got a few specific topics ready to go for weeks where we haven't got much else to talk about in the Pokemon world so if there's not much to talk about still come by because we've got some really interesting things that we want to focus down on a bit more in our episode so it might be next week it might not be it might be a couple few weeks time but like scott says let's not ramble on thank you so much to all of you who have listened or watched this week we appreciate you all 
do leave the comments, do leave the ratings. They mean a massive amount and really do help out the podcast. And uh, we'll leave it there. I'll say goodbye from me and throw it over to Scott to finish it off this week. Bye bye. I'll see you guys next week. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.